Powerful Prayer Based on Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul, He guides me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise to Jesus. Hello, my brothers and sisters. May you receive the peace of the Lord. May God illuminate your minds. From this prayer, may you find both a prayer for prosperity and a prayer for strength, encouragement, and the tranquility that God is our provider. Amen. Dear God and Heavenly Father, In this moment, we lift our hearts to you, seeking comfort and peace for all those facing challenges. My God, Financial Difficulties we understand that amid worries and uncertainties, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, hopeless, worried. Yet, when we place our trust, my Father, in your infinite goodness, wisdom, and mercy, then there is always a light to illuminate our paths. We ask the Heavenly Father to send strength and courage to all my brothers and sisters subscribed to this channel, those who have just arrived and are facing these financial issues. Grant each one the necessary confidence so they can persevere and believe that better days are coming and are near. It's close. In the name of Jesus, I now cast out all feelings of despair, all feelings of scarcity, worry. Grant confidence to your children, my Father, so they may persevere. May they believe in the power of prayer and that better days are coming, closer than they imagine. Beloved Father, Help them find creative solutions, enabling them to identify opportunities and act wisely in the face of financial challenges. Many of my brothers and sisters here with me today have very specific concerns. Father, I may not know them, I may not be aware, but you know, and you will provide. For those who feel compelled, open your hearts and share your greatest difficulties in the comments. I will pray, intercede, Seek the Lord on your behalf, so He may grant you strength. Supernatural strength to confront these challenges. Lord, grant each one peace of mind to manage the stress and anxiety stemming from financial difficulties. Help them maintain serenity even in adverse circumstances. Father, bestow discernment so they can make wise decisions, practice patience, and make choices at the right time and moment. My brothers and sisters, I feel the urge to pray that you release any haste, any leap ahead of caution from your mind and heart. Many rush, many make hasty decisions, leading to financial entanglement and harm. Receive peace, tranquility. Do not make any decision without God's guidance in your life. And now, I'm about to share a truly powerful insight within this prayer. Oh. How do we make decisions with tranquility and God's approval? It's a step-by-step -step process. First, seek guidance. Explore alternative options, alright? Before making a decision, look within yourself. Check if your soul feels at peace. Request spiritual discernment to guide your choice, for when you seek this, any and every decision you make will be accompanied by a peace beyond understanding. It will permeate your soul, allowing you to decide without regret or worry. Perhaps you've experienced this, making a decision and then dwelling on numerous other possibilities, wondering. What if I had done this? What if I had chosen that? That's not true peace of mind. Amen. Now, ask right here in the comments. Write, Lord, grant me peace of mind. Let every decision I make be precise. Remember what I'm telling you and type it down below. Lord, bestow upon me peace of mind in my decisions. Don't hesitate, my brothers and sisters. When we pray here, know that the Lord Jesus is with us, 
interceding on our behalf. Communicating our prayers to the Father, and working miracles, wonders, and marvels. Just believe. There's no other mediator between God and humanity than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're here, pleading, expressing ourselves. This channel has become a large family, and together we're praying. I've received countless testimonials of blessings and triumphs. But there's that brother, that sister who hesitates, who wavers, unsure whether to write or not. Let's try this again. And now, I'm about to share a truly potent insight within this prayer. How can we attain serenity and divine approval in our decisions? Here's what you do. Seek guidance, naturally. Explore alternative paths, okay? Before finalizing any choice, turn inward. Gauge whether your soul finds tranquility, alright? Appeal for spiritual insight to navigate your decision-making, for when you do, a remarkable sense of peace, beyond comprehension, will accompany every decision you make. It will infuse your very soul, enabling you to decide without regret or concern. Perhaps you've encountered this situation before, making a decision and subsequently pondering myriad alternate routes, asking. What if I'd chosen differently? What if I'd taken that other path? This internal turmoil isn't genuine peace of mind. Amen. Now, I invite you to request it, right here in the comments. Write, Lord, grant me peace of mind. May each decision I make be resolute. Take note of my words and type them below. Lord, endow me with tranquility for my decisions. Don't hesitate, my dear brothers and sisters. As we pray together, remember that the presence of the Lord Jesus is here, interceding on our behalf, conveying our prayers to the Father, and working wonders, miracles, and extraordinary feats. Just believe. Jesus Christ of Nazareth stands as the sole mediator between God and humankind. We gather here to entreat, to open our hearts. This channel has blossomed into a close-knit family, united in prayer. I've received countless stories of blessings and victories. Yet, there may be a sibling among us who hesitates, who wavers, grappling with the decision of whether or not to share. You have nothing to lose, so go ahead and share in the comments, Lord, grant me discernment, grant me peace of mind to make decisions. Loving God, Almighty and Holy God, we beseech you to touch the hearts of each person writing these words, especially those in need of this supernatural reinforcement. Inspire them to cultivate generosity within themselves, as the blessing arrives. May they be generous to those around them, feeling at ease while making decisions. Achieving desired outcomes, breaking free from potential debts and financial constraints. May they recognize employment opportunities, business prospects, and extra sources of income, working freely, my father, and reaping profit from their efforts. Bestow upon them hope, renewed faith, especially those striving to balance accounts, repay debts, and meet basic needs. Remind them daily that, though the journey is challenging, you remain the God of provision, in control of all things. My Father, you care for your children. This is why we gather here in prayer. Write this in uppercase letters. The Lord takes care of me. Everyone needs to know this. Write it in the name of Jesus. The Lord takes care of me. As you write these words, the forces of darkness crumble. When you declare this truth, the adversary loses his power. He is defeated, a failure. He has already lost. And we? We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Lord, we have confidence that all those who are here writing, opening their hearts, engaging in this prayer, are freely exercising a faith, a faith in your word that has been read, a faith that you are our provider and supply all our needs through the grace found in Christ Jesus. Today, we gather in prayer to strengthen ourselves, my Father, and to face challenging times of financial uncertainty. 
Amidst these adversities, often, you have pulled us from tight spots and placed us in high refuge. In this moment, Lord, we want to reinforce that each heart here has an owner, and that owner is Jesus of Nazareth, our provider. Your holy word has been read in Psalm 23, assuring us that you are our shepherd. We shall not want. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and in you, we find a peace that surpasses all understanding. We implore you to attend to each individual facing financial issues, those who have submitted their prayer requests. My Father, this is our supplication. We are calling out in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May this month be a month of change. May you, Lord, multiply our income. Let's write it here, my brothers and sisters. It's for those who have faith. I understand if you lack faith, it's alright. I will pray for you. But for those of you who have strong faith, right here, Lord, multiply my income. Amen. Write this down, O Lord, multiply my income. Amen. For those who are faithful in little and much, be assured that God will uplift you, you'll see. Now, for the more daring ones, write it like this, Lord, triple my income. Do you have the courage to write that? And for those who are even bolder, Lord, quadruple my income. My brothers and sisters, I'm speaking with conviction because I've experienced it myself. I've seen a small business start as one thing and then, through fervent prayers and pleas, the Lord responded, saying, Do you want to be blessed, my child? Then take this, overflowing, shaken together and running over. And God did that in my life. So, ask with faith, piece by piece, for all the income that comes into your hands, all the resources that God entrusts to you. Be generous. When God sees in you a channel of blessings, a channel of generosity, that's when everything aligns. The Lord Jesus then looks upon you, deposits unimaginable resources into your life, resources you never even considered, and you start living an abundant life. This is true prosperity. It has nothing to do with selfishness, with boasting, I am blessed. Not at all. The Lord removes all traces of selfishness from our hearts and replaces them with generosity, kindness, faith, and compassion. Help us trust you completely, knowing our days are in your hands. We are certain, my Father, that you are our provider and the one who will guide and sustain us at every step of our journey. Lord Jesus, may your glorious presence remain with us, granting us strength and hope to navigate through adversities and emerge victorious. There's an old hymn that resonates. I'm fond of those older hymns where the singer proclaims, I'm passing through the trial, giving glory to God. Keep giving glory to God. Now, those who understand the path, those who comment, those who write here, I'm moving through the trial, giving glory to God in everything. Give glory, you see. The Lord has taken care of you. And today, humbly, we draw near to God to request discernment, peace of mind. Today's key word, my brothers and sisters, is discernment and peace of mind for making decisions. If you've reached where you are now and aren't content, it's due to the decisions you've made. Small decisions that, when combined, pave the path you tread today. Yet, if you make choices inspired by God, with wisdom, with emotional intelligence, my brother, my sister, your idea flourishes, you know? What you put your hands to turns into gold, holds value. People buy, they purchase your product, they acquire your service, they invest in your resume to hire you. Do you grasp what I mean when I say buying is embracing? The notion is to pay the price for it. It's simple. God will grant you wisdom, you'll see. He'll bestow wisdom upon you. If you're truly with me in this prayer, just right here so I know who's truly with me. So many people. Yet at times, I'm skeptical. Is all this multitude truly with me? Put me down here. I'm genuinely in this prayer. 
Who wrote this? I'll pray even more for you, because there's no point in praying for those who don't wish it, right? Now, if you're willing, go ahead and write. Together, we are stronger, and with Jesus, we become invincible. Lord, grant us vision, creative vision. The Lord is the God of creativity. Grant us a creative vision to identify target audiences, companies, businesses, new clients. Opportunities for innovation, whether in products or services. Bless us abundantly, my Father. I have many brothers and sisters in this channel who have teenage children, around 14 years old, who are seeking employment. I pray that God opens doors for them, whether as young apprentices or interns. God will surely bless your son or daughter who desires to start their own business. Many parents tend to suppress their children's dreams. My brothers and sisters, please refrain from doing so. The world has changed significantly. There are many youngsters out there who are adept at utilizing the internet for productive purposes. They are compassionate, well-guided, and educated. Support them, both sons and daughters. We often get stuck in a single mindset, believing that the only path is education, college, and a traditional job. While that is a valid route, there are numerous other pathways as well. God is using me to speak to parents today, especially those whose children have identified new markets and opportunities that could lift the family out of financial struggles. However, parents sometimes only see a single path and inadvertently hinder their child's potential. Seek discernment and peace of mind, and my God will assist you. For those with whom God is speaking today about their children, please comment, Amen, as a response. Declare, I will support my child, encourage them. Encourage, support them, be it for husbands or wives who find themselves unemployed, lacking work, and struggling financially. Refrain from murmuring, complaining, and instead, offer support. Stand by your partner. Did you see? They are already suffering greatly from unemployment, especially the man, right? The man is traditionally seen as the provider, as the Bible also teaches. This doesn't mean that a woman can't generate income, of course she can. It doesn't mean that a woman can't earn more than a man, she certainly can. There's no issue if a woman earns more than a man or vice versa. However, each individual has their role in society and within the family. We must understand this well to avoid falling into the misconceptions spread by the world. So, if the husband is without a job, the wife supports, helps, strengthens, and prays for him. No complaining, no throwing it in his face. Likewise, if the wife is without work, she needs to contribute to sustain the family. The husband supports and offers words of encouragement. They help each other always. If both are without employment, I dare say it might be a sign from God for both of you to unite and start a business. There, I've said it. It's true, it's true. God will assist you in embarking on an entrepreneurial journey side by side, husband and wife, helping and triumphing together. Sometimes, it's a family business that will endure through generations. Amen. Jesus loves you so much, you know. Very, very much indeed. I hope this prayer has made sense to you and that our Heavenly Father continues to bless you abundantly in all aspects of life. Stretch out your hands. May the immense love of God, His grace, and the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Now and forever. Let all say Amen and Amen. Until our next prayer. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon you and your entire family. I desire to pray for your life and your family, specifically for your children. I declare these powerful psalms, and for each psalm, I will offer a prayer. During this prayer, you can find rest. 
You can even lie down on your bed and let these psalms bless your life and your family. Join me in agreement as we embark on this prayer. These psalms are both spiritual battles and psalms of victory against the enemy. The Bible tells us that the Word of God is like a sharp sword. When wielded with faith and connected to the Holy Spirit, it brings forth incredible miracles. Spiritual chains are broken, and if you are burdened by fear and anxiety or still enslaved by your past or even the present, know that this prayer we are about to engage in will bring life and peace to your life and your family. Psalm 91 He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge, His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In this emotional moment, let the assurance of God's presence overwhelm you. His promises are true, and He is faithful. May you find comfort and strength in His words. May your heart be at peace knowing that God is your refuge and that no harm shall befall you. Trust in Him completely, for His angels watch over you in all your ways. They will hold you up with their hands, so you will not stumble and your foot will not strike against a stone. You will tread upon lions and cobras, you will trample the young lion and the serpent. Because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you, I will set you on high because you have known my name. You will call upon me, and I will answer you, I will be with you in trouble, I will deliver you and honor you. With long life I will satisfy you, and show you my salvation. Lord God, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we now ask for your protection over this house. We declare to God that the powerful hand of the Lord is upon each one in this home, within this environment. We renounce strife, discord, and adversity, and we proclaim the Lord's blessing upon this household. Father, I prophesy that in this home, people will sleep soundly, for the Lord is upholding this house. Lord God, we declare that your mighty hand is upon this environment. The blood of Jesus is shielding and covering the roof of this house or even this apartment. We pray, declaring that no evil has the power to enter this house or disturb the sleep of those who dwell within. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this home be completely covered by the Lord, guarded 24 hours a day by the mighty angels of God. Amen. Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Soul, guide me along the paths of righteousness for the sake of Your name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me, Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to prophesy provision over this home. Lord, you are our shepherd, and we shall not lack anything. We declare that abundance enters this home, prosperity, wealth, and financial victories. We declare to God that you are the provider of our house, the provider of this home. Your word says, Lord, that you give to your children even while they sleep. Therefore, Father, I believe that during this night of rest, this person will be blessed by you. Their plans, projects, connections, sales, and businesses will be released by the Lord while they sleep. We place everything in your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask God to bless the work of this person, the work of everyone in this home, so that it may be fruitful, productive, and bring great joy to this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the blessings and promises of the Lord are upon this home. This home is blessed by God. You are the God who owns the gold and the silver, and surely, O God, you will bless the fruits of our labor, our businesses, and our comings and goings. Certainly, Father, everything we have and everything connected to us is blessed by you and protected by you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear, though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me, he shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle, I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Lord, Hear my voice when I cry out to you. Have mercy on me and answer me. When you said, Seek my face, my heart responded, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me, do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help, do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. Surely I would have lost heart, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, wait, I say, on the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we have faith in you. As your word says, faith is a shield that neutralizes the enemy's fiery darts. We now cancel every curse, every opposing prayer, every envy directed towards us, our home, and our lives. We also cancel every slander, lie, fabrication, and malicious intent. We declare that all the works of the enemy against our lives, businesses, marriages, and children are destroyed. My God, we trust in you. We believe in your goodness, O God, and we believe that you fight on behalf of those who believe in you and those who walk in integrity of heart. Lord, you see what is within us and you know, only God knows, why you know our rising and our lying down. 
Therefore, O God, we ask you to bring justice to your servants who walk in integrity. Bring justice, O God, in favor of those who live to please your name. Let every adversary and enemy be confounded by your power, Father, and let your light shine upon us, guiding us, directing us, and delivering us from all evil and from the will of our enemies to ensnare us through words, through lies. Guard us, Father, and deliver us from all harm in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Psalm 34 I will bless the Lord at all times, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to Him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life, and loves many days, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil, and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. In you, O Lord, we find our refuge and our strength. We lift our voices to bless your name, for you are worthy of all praise. Our souls find joy in you, and we exalt your name together. We have sought you, and you have heard us, delivering us from our fears. We look to you and radiate with your light, unashamed and unafraid. In our times of trouble, we cry out to you, and you hear us, saving us from all our troubles. Your angels surround us, protecting us, for we fear and reverence you. We testify that you are good, and those who trust in you lack no good thing. We invite others to taste and see your goodness, for blessed are those who trust in you. We fear and honor you, for in doing so, we lack nothing. Even when faced with challenges, we depart from evil, doing good and seeking peace. Your eyes are on the righteous, and your ears are open to their cry. You oppose those who do evil, removing their memory from the earth. The righteous cry out, and you hear them, delivering them from all their troubles. You are close to those who are broken-hearted. In your presence, we find comfort, strength, and restoration. We trust in your faithfulness, O Lord and he saves those who have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. The wicked shall be slain by their own evil, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray to God for his deliverance upon us and our household. We block and nullify everything that has been sent against us to hinder our path, whether it be in our physical bodies or in the physical bodies of our loved ones, our spouse, our children. 
In the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, we declare to God that He is the God of deliverance, the one who guards our steps from all evil and the snares of the enemy. Protect us, O Father, from all theft, from all assault. Deliver us, O God, from all wickedness and from every person who plots harm against us. You, Lord, go before us, opening paths and delivering us. Place your angels, O God, as our escort, angels before us and angels behind us. We believe, O God, in your divine protection and your supernatural covering that surrounds and guards us. Lord, you will not allow the enemy to touch our physical bodies or the physical bodies of those in our household. We are guarded by you. In the authority of Jesus Christ's name, we cancel every generational curse, every inherited curse, and declare the downfall of every curse in our lives. We declare that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We declare that divine health dwells in our blood, in our cells, in every part of our bodies, in every joint of our being, in every bone of our bodies. We declare to God that He is the one who rescues us. Yes, Lord, You guard us from every affliction. Your word also says, Lord, that we shall not be afflicted even financially because those who fear You lack no good thing. We raise a banner here in our household, Lord. In our household, we fear your name, and therefore, Lord, I want to prophetically declare that nothing will be lacking in this home. Absolutely nothing will be lacking in this dwelling. It is guarded by you, it is blessed in the name of Jesus, Amen. Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see it in fear, and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. O Lord my God, you have done many wonderful works, your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order, if I were to declare and speak of them, they would be more than can be numbered. You do not desire sacrifice or offering, you have opened my ears. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I come, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed your righteousness in the great assembly, indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O Lord, you know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart, I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord, let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have surrounded me, my iniquities have overtaken me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head, therefore my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who seek to destroy my life, let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish me evil. Let them be desolate because of their shame, who say to me, Aha, Aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, let such as love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer, do not delay, O my God. Dear God, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we want to declare, Lord, that you are certainly now placing your hand upon this household. 
No matter how much the enemy surrounds this home, no matter how much the enemy seeks to attack, shame, and confuse your servants, Lord, you will provide deliverance. They will be guarding them, guarding their home, protecting their family. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord is already protecting this home, the Lord is already protecting this family, and the enemy will not prevail. Father, I declare that your blessings are upon this household. Father, I declare that prosperity is in this home, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Those who, in any way, try to harm, those who, in any way, seek to disturb the peace of this home, the tranquility of this dwelling. They will be confounded because this home is guarded by the presence of God. The presence of God dwells in this home. The presence of God dwells in this place where this prayer is being heard. Yes, we call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit for this environment, and may the presence of the Holy Spirit fill this space. May the joy of the Lord fill this space. May the peace of the Lord fill this space. May the prosperity of the Lord fill this space. We declare to God that no evil shall have power over us, and that all injustice is falling to the ground now because we declare that you are our righteousness. You are the righteousness of this home. O oh God, cleanse me from my iniquity and purify me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, against you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a pure heart and renew a righteous spirit within me. Do not cast me out from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure, build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offerings offered whole, then bulls will be offered on your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for forgiveness for all our sins. We know that Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to save us, to forgive our sins, to justify us. We ask God for forgiveness for all our failures, our shortcomings, our hastiness, and the words that have come out of our mouths, wrong words, hurtful words, words that have grieved you, O God. Holy Spirit, purify our lips, purify our lives, remove from within us that which does not please you. And we pray to God that there will always be the joy of salvation within each one of us, knowing that the most important thing is to have Jesus in our lives and our names written in the Book of Life. We love God, your presence. We want to walk in the narrow path, we want to walk, Lord, in your presence and under your light, 
O God. In this moment, we pray to the Lord, asking Him to bring salvation to our home. Lord, come and change the hearts of those who have turned their backs on You, those who are somehow blinded by the enemy. We pray, O God, for their salvation. We pray, Father, that You bless them and touch them with Your power, in the name of Jesus. Guard us, Lord, under Your shadow, at Your right hand, so that the sun will not harm us by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil, He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Lord, we ask that you secure everyone in our household, whether we are going out or coming back. Guard us, Lord, throughout our journeys. We know, O oh God, that you are working in every area of our lives. You see what we cannot see, and you hear what we cannot hear. That is why, O oh God, we declare our complete dependence on you, for you are our God, our help, and in you, O oh God, we place our trust. Our strength comes from the Lord, our joy comes from the Lord, our gift comes from the Lord, and the blessings come from the Lord. We stand before you, O Father, because we know that it is you who guards us. You are our shadow, our right hand, and we trust that you will safeguard our souls from all evil. Amen. Psalm 127 Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we declare that the Lord is building our house. The Lord is honoring our work, honoring our seed sown, and surely, Father, we will reap. We will reap abundantly, even more than your servant Isaac, who reaped thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. We, Father, declare that we are children, children of the Lord, destined to prosper and advance in this land. You are guarding our lives, building our lives, and therefore, O God, we shall not fear. You watch over us while we sleep, and we know, O God, that your eyes are constantly upon those who fear you. The righteous cry out to the Lord, and you hear them and deliver them from all their troubles. Every square meter of our house, we entrust to you, O God. This prayer, Amen and Amen. If you are not subscribed to this channel, subscribe now and start following these daily prayers here on YouTube, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, we are going to pray with all our faith, asking God to break every chain through the power of Psalm 91. Before we begin praying, it is very important that you type your prayer request in the comments. Let's pray for every bondage, everything that is trying to hinder your victory, to be broken. Every evil, in the name of Jesus, will be defeated. We will read Psalm 91 and together, with all our faith, we will pray to the Almighty Lord. In this prayer, I am certain that the Lord will deliver victory, blessings, and rewards. Let us pray together. With all our faith. It is also important that you share this prayer with seven friends, whether on Facebook, Instagram, or in your WhatsApp. Contacts and Groups. Share this prayer with seven or more friends so that they may be blessed through this prayer. For when we bless someone's life, we are also blessed. So, 
Bless the lives of your friends. Share this prayer with them. Let us read Psalm 91 with all our faith and then pray to the Lord. Amen. And Psalm 91 says the following, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but you shall not be harmed, only with your eyes you will witness the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No harm shall befall you, no plague shall come near your home. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone, you will tread upon lions and cobras, you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, I will deliver him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God for this powerful word. This is Psalm 91, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. Type the following phrase in the comments, the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life at this moment. Place your hand on your heart and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Place your hand on your head and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Stretch your hands high and repeat with me, The blessings of Psalm 91 are in my home, in my family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Claim this word. Claim your victory and in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray together to the Lord and claim all the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Therefore, in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray to the Sovereign God. An Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth. In your holy and blessed presence, here we are. We are here in this moment of prayer, praying Psalm 91 with all our faith. God, I want to present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. Lord, May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the life of each person who requested prayer, help, and provision. May you send your angel to sever the ties, undo the entanglements, and break every bondage in their emotional life, financial life, spiritual life, and health. May all chains and constraints be shattered now in the name of Jesus Christ. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed in our lives, in our homes, in our families. God, in the name of Jesus, shelter us under the shadow of your wings. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon us. I lift up the financial life of everyone listening to me right now. May every bondage, every hindrance blocking financial blessings be broken, every evil be broken, every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask for your blessing upon the financial life of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them, grant them victory, open doors of employment. Open the doors of employment. Lord, in the lives of your people, in the name of Jesus, for those who are unemployed. May the door of employment open, and may your name be glorified. For those who are in debt, May all their debts be paid in the name of Jesus. 
Open doors, prosper your sons and daughters, so that they may pay off their debts. I present those who have a business, may the Lord prosper them. For those seeking their first job, may the Lord open this door. For those who are studying, may the Lord bless their minds, may the Lord illuminate their minds. And may they prosper in their studies. God, may the blessings of Psalm 90 be upon the financial lives of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them from the north, south, east, and west. Bring forth prosperity. Showers of blessings. Showers of victory. Showers of power upon the lives of everyone listening to me at this moment. God, I present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. No matter how simple the prayer request may be, I ask you, Lord, to perform miracles, to do the unprecedented, to accomplish the impossible, and grant victory to your servants, to your handmaidens, for the glory of your name. We ask you, Holy Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit of God, I present to you, Lord. Every prayer request. Bring healing to those who are going through a period of illness, of disease. May every disease in the name of Jesus. Disappear now, may every lump disappear, may all pain in the body disappear, may all leg and arm pain vanish in the name of Jesus, may. Every digestive system ailment disappear now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May every sickness vanish in this moment and never. Return. Bring healing, bring restoration. Bless the health of your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. I also present to you, Lord. The romantic lives of those who are single, those who are dating, those who are engaged and married. May every bondage, every hindrance that tries to block, that tries to tie down the romantic victory of your people be broken. May every evil be rebuked. Bless. The romantic lives of each one, bless for the glory and praise of your name those who are single and seeking marriage. May the Lord bless their romantic lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. May the romantic lives of each one listening to me be abundantly blessed, even in this year, in the name of Jesus. For marriages in crisis, marriages facing trials, may the Lord bring restoration to those marriages. May the Lord bless families. God, in the name of Jesus, may all evil crumble and may your name be glorified. Bless families. Lord, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the romantic lives of your people. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon their finances, their health, and every area of their lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. Open the pathways. Open the doors, Lord, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask because we believe in the power of your name. Your word says that whatever we ask in your name, believing, we shall receive. And in the name of Jesus, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed upon the lives of your people, and may your name be glorified in the victory of each one of us, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask that every bondage be broken, that every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. May everything that tries to interrupt, everything that tries to paralyze the victory of each one of us, everything that tries to block, be rebuked in the name of Jesus. May the walls crumble, may the giants fall in the name of Jesus Christ, we take possession, Lord, of the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives, in our homes, in our families, for your word reveals to us that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, my fortress, and in Him, I will trust, for He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and 
Under his wings, you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague. Come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They will hold you up with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. May these blessings of Psalm 91 be upon our lives, upon our families, upon our homes, and upon our paths may our paths be opened, may the closed doors be opened, and may your name, the eternal God, be glorified in our victory. May the Lord bless your people in every area of their lives with peace, blessing, victory, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we pray with all our faith, and we thank you in advance, because you, Lord, are the power, the glory, the strength, and the dominion forever and ever. Cover us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Guard our lives, protect our lives and our families. May your resplendent cloud of glory be upon us. May your sacred mantle be upon us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Amen. And thanks be to God, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Take possession of this word, take possession of this prayer. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. We are here every day, praying to the Lord. May God bless your life in a very special way, to each subscriber of this channel. Thank you very much, because together we are a prayer family, and our united prayers have great power. A big hug to your heart, and may the peace of the Lord reign over all of us. And remember, you were born to conquer, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. May God bless our lives in a very special way. The peace of the Lord Jesus, may God bless you. Thanks to God, He grants us victory through the power of God. I greet all my brothers and sisters with a holy and powerful peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Today, we will pray Psalm 90. We will be reading Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we will pray based on this. Psalm. I want this prayer to be a blessing in your life and in the life of another person. For this reason, please share this video with a friend, a family member, so they can also receive this prayer. Amen. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I also want to send my greetings to all the subscribers of the channel and to all those who have activated the notifications. Thank you very much for being part of this prayer family. All the subscribers of the channel are already part of my prayer family, and I include all of you in my prayers. If you wish, feel free to comment below to make your prayer request. I always read the comments and present them in prayer. Before God Psalm 90 is a psalm written by Moses, a beautiful psalm that brings us a reflection and a very important life lesson. It is Psalm 90, in verse 1, it says, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. 
Here, the prophet Moses writes this psalm. And in verse 1, he makes an important declaration, saying that God had been and continues to be his refuge from generation to generation, the refuge for the people of Israel. The faithfulness of our God is astounding. He is our refuge, the one who guards, delivers, and protects us. And in verse 2, Moses further says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In this second verse, Moses, the psalmist, the prophet, speaks about the greatness of our God, that before all things were formed in the universe, God was God and is God from eternity to eternity. The prophet Isaiah says that the Lord is the Prince of Peace. He is the Father of Eternity, the Mighty and Powerful God. And in verse 3, Moses continues to write, saying, You turn people back to dust. Saying, Return to dust, you mortals. Because in verse 4, it says, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Here, in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 90, the psalmist Moses, a prophet of the Lord, shows how fleeting human life is and how quickly it passes. However, God, with his omniscience, his power, his exalted power, in verse 4, Moses brings a profound revelation about God. He says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. This shows us that God's time is different from our time. A thousand years may seem like a long time for us, but for God, a thousand years is like a day. This signifies how great, how powerful, how majestic our God is. The God we serve is a powerful, great, and exalted God, so much so that a thousand years for our God is like just one day. And in verse 5, he says even more, you sweep them away like a flood, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. Here, in verses 5 and 6, Moses is referring to the fragility of humanity, how fragile human beings are. Men and women are like plants that grow, wither, and die. And how transient we are in the face of the greatness of our God. And in verse 7, he says, For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. In verse 8, you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Verse 9, all our days pass away under your wrath, we finish our years with a moan. Here, Moses is emphasizing once again how fragile human life is and how much we need God. We need God to breathe, to live, to be happy. We need God for everything in this life. God is the refuge for the weary soul. God is the compass that guides the lost. God is the rock that remains steadfast and keeps our lives firm in His presence. Because of our fragility, we need to stand firm in the Lord so that we do not fall. And this Psalm 90 illustrates how fragile human life is. And in verse 10, it says, The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty, yet their span is but toil and trouble, they are soon gone, and we fly away. Here, in this tenth verse, Moses is saying that human beings reach seventy or eighty years with much weariness, and we can see how fleeting this life is. Do you remember that some time ago you were 15 years old? There was a time when you were 10 years old. And notice how quickly time has passed. Notice how swiftly time has flown by, and you didn't realize it passing. And that's what Psalm 90 wants to remind us of, how transient life is. We need to make the most of this. Life in the presence of God, in the presence of the people we love. And in verse 11, it says even more, who considers the power of your anger, and your wrath according to the fear of you. 
so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to teach him to number his days. What does that mean? To number our days. Notice that the wisest people, those who possess wisdom, are able to understand the dilemmas, the problems of life. Notice that fools, those who are not wise, cannot perceive life. They live as if they never truly lived. They live as fools. They live without comprehending the human existence. But those who fear God, those who seek God, can receive from God the wisdom to live. And that's why in this Psalm 90, Moses says, Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. And in verse 13, Moses says, Return, O Lord. How long? Have pity. On your servants. In verse 14, Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Verse 15, Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Here, the psalmist, the Prophet Moses, is referring to the period of struggle and trial that the people of Israel and Moses himself went through. Without a doubt, Moses wrote this psalm in light of all the anguish, battles, and evil he had experienced in his life. However, in Psalm 90, Moses is praying to God, asking for mercy, seeking God's help, and asking the Lord to look upon him. He acknowledges his insignificance, his humanity, and recognizes how great and majestic the Lord is. And in verse 16, Moses says, Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Verse 17, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us, yes. Establish the work of our hands. Here, in verse 17, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to confirm the work of their hands. This means that often people do not recognize the work of our hands. But Moses is asking God to acknowledge the work of his hands. In other words, Moses is saying, God, see how much I have done for you. When we talk about hands, the prophet Moses represents it well. Because the Bible says that when Moses, the same one who wrote Psalm 90, was in battle, Joshua and Hur were there supporting him. And the Bible says that Moses' hands grew weary. As long as Moses held up his hands, the people of Israel were winning the war. But when Moses lowered his hands, the people of Israel would lose the battle. Aaron and Hur held up Moses' weary hands and extended them. And Moses prayed for the people, and they won the fight. In writing this Psalm 90, Moses is expressing a kind of spiritual weariness. He is presenting before God how small he is and how great God is in his life. That's why in Psalm 90, Moses says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. It's as if Moses wants to say, God, you are too powerful, and I am merely a speck before you. You are too majestic, and I am a grain of sand before you. I am transient in this life, but you, O oh God, are mighty. God delights in this. When we acknowledge how small we are, when we recognize our fragility before God, before the one who lives and reigns forever, that's when God manifests his power, his love, and his glory. God doesn't need the strong because he is already strong. God doesn't need the great because he is already great. God needs the weak to show those who think they are strong that he is a powerful God. That's why God used David. In human terms, David was the smallest, the weakest. Goliath, the giant in human terms, was the strongest, the most powerful. But God uses the weak to overcome the strong. God uses the small to defeat the great. 
God uses those who are not to confound those who think they are something. So, my friend, who is listening to me at this moment, this is the blessing of Psalm 90. God is affirming to our lives, I will confirm the work of your hands. I am your refuge. I am the one who guards you, says the Lord. For this reason, be encouraged, rejoice, and rest because God is the one who sustains you. God is the one who protects you. God is the one who delivers you. And the blessings of Psalm 90 are upon your life. There will be a reign of victory, a reign of grace, a reign of power, a reign of blessings in your life, in your family, in your home, and wherever you lay your hands. The Lord will confirm it as a blessing, as prosperity. Wherever your hands touch, the Lord will prosper. The Lord will bless. That's why in the last verse of Psalm 90, verse 17, Moses says, Confirm the work of our hands. Today, God is confirming the works of your hands, meaning God is confirming your blessing, your victory. God is confirming the open door in your life. God is confirming the honor of God in your story. Claim this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 90 in your life. Amen. At this moment, I want to offer a prayer based on Psalm 90. I want to pray for you, for your family, for your home, for your work, for your business. Please type your name below in the comments. I want to offer this special prayer for your life. If you can, close your eyes at this moment. Focus on God, and let us pray. Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the ends of the earth, in this moment of prayer, we come before you and ask for your blessing and provision. God, we have just read Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we want to claim all the blessings that are found in Psalm 90. Lord, we ask you to confirm the work of our hands. Confirm, O oh God, the blessings that we need to receive from your hand. Remove from our path anything that blocks, anything that hinders our victory. Grant us, Lord, your salvation, your deliverance, and the rewards that come from your throne, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. In this moment of prayer, I pray for your servant who is listening to me now, for your servant who is hearing me at this hour, in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, open every closed door and grant victory to your people. We ask you, Lord, for your deliverance. Comfort the hearts. Refresh the souls, O God, in the name of Jesus. For all those who are suffering for any reason, for all those who have lost, for all those who have failed, God, in the name of Jesus, console, comfort, and lift them up in the power of your might, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Visit the families, visit the homes with your peace, with your love. I pray to you, Lord, come and bring your provision, your answer, your Love, your victory for the glory of your name, we ask you in prayer. Pour out your love upon us. Lord, pour out your infinite mercies, your infinite graces upon us. Pour them upon our lives, upon our family members, upon our homes, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask and desire this. We thank you, we thank you for deliverance, we thank you for healing, we thank you for open doors. We thank you for everything you are doing and everything you will do in our lives. Release upon us, Lord, an abundance of days. Release upon us health and prosperity and the blessings of the Psalms in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask and thank you in advance. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank God, and may God bless your life. May God bless your family and bless your home. Share this prayer with someone you love, 
with someone you care about. It is always good to share the good things in life, and prayer is something good for our soul, for our spirit. I will conclude here. Today we are going to pray the prayer, Psalm 18, and it will be a blessing in your life and in your family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to receive prayers and messages of faith. For those of you who are already subscribed, please share this video with others, a friend, a family member, so that they too may be blessed by this prayer. May God bless you in a special way. If you wish, make your prayer request, and we will present it before God. Amen. We will be reading Psalm 18, providing some explanations of this psalm, and we will also be praying based on Psalm 18. Psalm 18 says the following, a psalm of David. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In these verses, we can see this beautiful declaration of love from the psalmist David to God. He declares that the Lord is his shield, strength, and refuge in his life. We can apply this to our own lives and understand that God is your shield, strength, and refuge. In verse 3, the psalmist says further, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before his ears. In these verses, we can see the psalmist declaring that snares of death and traps were set against his life. However, the Lord delivered him because he called upon the Lord in times of distress. This often happens in our lives as well. But God is faithful to break the snare and grant us victory because he is our shield, the one who gives us strength to overcome. And in the following verse, verse 7, it tells us even more. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of the mountains also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Here the psalmist is speaking about the wrath of God, his indignation, and the earth shook with the fury of the Lord. And in the following verse, verse 8, it depicts God's response to the enemies of David. Here the psalmist declares in verse 8 the stance of God in the face of wickedness, in the face of injustice. It says, smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub, and flew, he soared upon the wings of the wind. Here the psalmist is showing that God was indignant with the things done against him. That is why the Lord He has this posture of justice towards all those who rise against the anointed of the Lord. And you are anointed by God, you are anointed of the Lord, and whoever touches you touches God. Whoever touches you touches your Creator, who is the Lord of hosts. That is why the Bible says that we are the Bride of Jesus. Whoever touches the Bride touches the Groom. That is why the Bible says that the Lord is our Father, and whoever touches the Son or the Daughter touches the Father. So whoever touches you touches God. That is why the Lord is your shield, our shield. And in verse 11, the psalmist says even more, He made darkness his secret place, his canopy around him was dark. Waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord 
thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. Foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were. Uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many. Waters. In these verses we just read, we can see a God of justice acting in favor of those who serve him, to the point that the psalmist says that the Lord drew him out of many waters. These many waters that the psalmist is referring to are the struggles and adversities he was facing. And if you are going through any struggle, any persecution, know that the Lord will draw you out of the many waters. In other words, He will save you with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That is why in verse 17, the psalmist says, He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place, He delivered me because He delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in His sight. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all His judgments were before me, and I did not put away His statutes from me. I was also blameless before Him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in His sight. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, with a blameless man you will show yourself blameless. In these verses, the psalmist is showing how just our God is, how mighty our God is, how majestic our God is. Here, he is demonstrating the goodness of the Father towards him, and he is declaring how powerful God was in his life. And in verse 26, he continues by saying, With the pure you will show yourself pure, and with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. Here, in verse 20 and 26, it speaks of how with the merciful, God will show mercy, and with the sincere man, God will show sincerity. With the pure, God will show purity, and with the wicked, God will show cunningness. Here, the psalmist is referring to God as a just God, a God of justice. God will do good to those who do good, and God will bring harm to those who do evil. And in verse 27, he says further, For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. You are my lamp, O Lord, my God, shine forth in my darkness. In this verse, the psalmist is saying that God will bring light into his darkness. And perhaps you may find yourself in a similar situation, going through a moment of darkness, a gloomy time. But God is saying, I will bring light to your darkness, and I will bring clarity to your life. The light of the Lord will reach your house, your life, and you will glorify the name of the one who lives and reigns forever. This psalm further reveals in verse 29, For by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. The way of God is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. It is a shield for all who trust in Him. 4. Who is God, except the Lord? And who is a rock, except our God? God is the one who strengthens me and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He trains my hands for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. We need to understand that the author of this psalm is David, and that is why he uses this language of war as if he were going into a fight, a war, a battle. This same David was the one who defeated the Philistine army, the same one who defeated the giant Goliath. You know the story very well, and here the psalmist David is declaring that it is God who gives him strength, who surrounds him with strength. 
And God is doing the same thing in your life, my sister and my brother. God is giving you strength to overcome, empowering your arms to break iron bows, bronze bows. The Lord is giving you strength to rise above difficulties, to surpass afflictions and distress. Receive strength from God. And Psalm 18 says even more in verse 35, You have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise, they fell beneath my feet. Here the psalmist is still using the language of war. When he went into battle, the Lord granted him strength, and he defeated his enemies. Bringing it to the present day, it is no different. We have spiritual enemies, forces of evil that fight against us 24-7. But God, the God of David, the God who manifested himself in David through this Psalm 18 that we are reading, he will give you strength to overcome your enemies, to break through barriers, to conquer difficulties, and to defeat your enemies. And he makes a very important declaration in verse 39. He says, For you equipped me with strength for the battle, you made those who rise against me sink under me. And in verse 38, he speaks of how his enemies fell beneath his feet. So, in these verses 38 and 39, we can See that David's enemies had fallen at his feet, and even Jesus himself said that the Lord grants us power to tread on the forces of evil. Hey! My sister and my brother who are listening to me right now, at this moment, God is giving you strength to overcome evil, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and all the power of the evil one. Receive spiritual strength right now to conquer the darkness, to overcome the evil that may surround you. And in the following verses, it says more, You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed those who hated me. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them, to the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine. As wind-blown dust, I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people, you have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me, foreigners cower before me, as soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart, they come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes, from a violent man you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations, I will sing the praises of your name. This is the last verse of Psalm 18. The psalmist declares, he gives his king great victories, he shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. In this Psalm 18, the psalmist is using language of battles. That's why he talks about pursuing and defeating the enemy. But we know very well that our true enemies are not the people who speak ill of us, who envy us, who gossip about our lives. Our true enemies are the forces of evil, the malevolent spirits that fight against our lives. And this Psalm 18 is a psalm of war, a psalm of battle. Just as God anointed, strengthened, and empowered the psalmist to win the fights and wars, he will do the same in my life and in your life. God will give you spiritual capacity to overcome the spiritual battles you may be facing. Just as God empowered the psalmist in Psalm 18, God will also empower you to break down walls and conquer the forces of evil. And right now, I want to pray for blessings. May the blessings in Psalm 18 come down upon your life, your home, and your family. 
Close your eyes as I pray for you in this moment. Let's pray, Holy Spirit of Truth. We have just read Psalm 18, and we believe that you are the one who equips our hands, who trains our arms, so that we can break bronze. Bows. You are the one who enables us to leap over walls. You are the one who grants us strength. Just as the Lord anointed, equipped, and strengthened the psalmist David in Psalm 18, I ask you. In the lives of my sister and my brother who is listening to me, strengthen, equip, and grant victory. May the blessings of Psalm 18 be upon their home, their family, and the life of your daughter who is listening, your son who is hearing in the name of Jesus. May your Holy Spirit come and do the supernatural. Do what the doctor cannot do, do what the lawyer cannot do, do what the psychologist cannot do. Go, Lord, go there, Father, and perform the supernatural, the miracle in the lives of your sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus. Christ. Repeat these words with me, I take hold of all the blessings of Psalm 18. I take hold of my victory. The Lord is my strength, and in Him I will trust. He gives me strength to leap over walls. He gives me strength to overcome my enemies. He gives me strength to surpass my limits for the glory of God and the blessings of Psalm 18. May they be upon your life, your home, your family, and may the Holy Spirit of God strengthen and enlighten you, guiding your steps to make the right decisions and to overcome and defeat the enemies that come your way. Receive strength from the Father and the Holy Spirit to overcome, courage and encouragement to surpass your limits. I'll end here.